Ever since Midjourney appeared on the scene, the idea of using AI to create 3D models quickly gained traction. It was the next frontier for AI to conquer. In the beginning, the first solutions that emerged weren't very impressive. The models were often blobby and lacked definition. Fast forward to today, and we now have tools capable of generating 3D objects complete with AI-generated textures. There's clearly still room for improvement, and this is where Microsoft comes in. A couple of weeks ago, they came out with a paper called Structured 3D Latents for Scalable and Versatile 3D Generation. It's a mouthful, but what it means is that we now have one more new tool to experiment with. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. It's been a few months since I last tested one of these tools, so I was quite impressed by Microsoft's results. It's not as though we're suddenly getting amazing 3D models, but the results are much better than I expected. You can run things locally, but for people who can't be bothered, there's a demo that we can run through a browser. The process is straightforward. Upload an image, press a couple of buttons, and within a minute or two we get a 3D model back. It's that simple. I recommend using a transparent PNG instead of a JPEG because the automatic background removal command doesn't do a great job. Now, let's see what kind of results we can get. I started testing the system with uh, images of uh, furniture, and the first one I tried was this leather couch. Before producing the final model, Trellis gives us a short video preview of how the model will look. Even though I can already see some uh, glitches and weird geometry, I have to admit the result is impressive. But let's check the actual model. It's amazing to see how close AI got to the real thing. For instance, it successfully gave the couch four legs, even though the back legs are barely visible in the image. But most importantly, the overall shape of the couch is largely correct. Of course, the system does get confused with the things that we as humans can easily decipher. For example, look at how the model handled the sides and back of the couch. In the image, we can clearly see two cushions on either side. While we as humans understand that these are just cushions, the AI assumed they were part of a larger structure. As a result, in the 3D model, they extend all the way to the back. But this is not a big deal, we can easily fix that when uh, remodeling the object. This model is great as a starting point, and not really as a final deliverable. Another area of confusion for the AI was the shape of the legs. We as humans can easily tell that these are basically rounded rectangles. But the AI produced a shape that kinda looks like the real shape, but it's not quite right. Aside from these two points though, the overall shape is very close to the real object. We're missing finer details like the folds and the cushions, but I wouldn't expect the AI to be able to handle this level of detail. At least, not yet. Who knows, maybe in a few months this might be completely solved. But overall, this is a great starting point for modeling our own object from scratch. As for the texture, it's nothing to write home about. While it vaguely resembles the real-world material, it's blurry and lacks definition. But again, it doesn't really matter because in a production environment, we would also build the texture from scratch. What I see here is essentially a good placeholder, something for us to experiment with as we're building the final asset. I can imagine this system becoming infinitely better if we had the ability to feed the AI multiple angles. So in addition to the three-quarter view, have the possibility to add a side view, back view, and so on. This would eliminate a lot of the guesswork on AI's part and lead to more detailed meshes. And if we could also supply close-ups for textures and other object details, we could end up with an amazing system that would significantly reduce modeling time. <laughs> it's incredible how fast things develop. While I was editing this video, a new update was released, allowing us to do exactly what I just described. We can now use multiple images, enabling the system to produce a more accurate result. So the issue with the cushions is now completely gone. However, as you can see, some new glitches were introduced. 
the sides of the couch have small holes in them, and the back of the couch has this weird slope. But with how quickly things are evolving, I wouldn't be surprised if these issues are fixed within a few days. Now, let's check another object, this cool little bench. Based on the previous results, this should be a piece of cake. And uh, it looks like it is. The overall shape is accurate, and all the main elements of the object are present. However, the AI got a bit confused when uh, constructing the backside, adding two extra structural elements. While it's clear from the front view that these elements don't exist, the AI doesn't seem to understand that the back should correspond to the front. As for the texture, it's far from ideal. It's very blurry and doesn't add much to the model. It definitely has to be rebuilt from scratch. Next, I wanted to see how well the AI would do with very abstract and unusual shapes. This vase certainly fits the bill, and to make things a bit more challenging, I chose a front view instead of a three-quarter view. Apparently, that wasn't an issue at all. <laughs> Apart from a strange indentation on the side of the vase, the rest of the shape looks perfect. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the 3D model because I kept getting error after error when trying to export it. I tried 6 or 7 times before finally giving up. I don't think the problem though has to do with the actual model. It's likely a server issue, but for whatever reason, this object seems to trip up the system. What's interesting to note here is that each new generation was slightly different than the last one. There was one version where there were no weird bumps or indentations, so this might be a valid strategy. If you're not getting the expected shape, try running the command again to see if a different result works better. From these tests, it's clear that uh, Trellis does a great job with everyday familiar objects. The models aren't production ready, but they're good enough for quickly testing out a design or trying to figure out placement on a piece of artwork. Basically, stuff like that. Apparently, this algorithm is also great with imaginary objects, so I wanted to also give that a try. And overall, I would say it did reasonably well. I first uh, tried this uh, silly, futuristic computer concept that uh, Midjourney came up with. I also had a hard time exporting this one, but after a couple of days and uh, an updated version of Trellis, I finally managed to get it done. Given all the hard edges and the concept, I expected the model to have clearly defined surfaces. However, we still end up with these messy, undefined areas. Another interesting thing is seeing how AI imagined the back of the computer. Aside from the big holes at the top and bottom, which don't make much sense, I really like this area here. It's a nice piece of detail that matches the overall design of the computer. As for the section right above it, I'm not a fan, but this type of result is totally understandable since the system had no information to work with. The last image I tried was a sketch from Toy Story 4. I've also modeled this uh, character a couple of years ago while uh, testing uh, Shaper 3D and uh, 3D printing, so I was curious to see how well the AI would perform. On one hand, it's impressive to see AI having no problems interpreting the sketch and creating a full 3D model without any major issues. On the other hand, the model <laughs> leaves a lot to be desired. The hands don't really connect, there are no details like the screws on the side of the robot or the buttons on the robot's chest, the legs also look odd, and the back of the robot has some weird details. And now that I'm looking at it a little bit more, the robot's ears also have the wrong shape. There's a lot there that's not right, but still, for a model that took 40 to 60 seconds to complete, the result is super impressive. Here's how the AI-generated model compares to mine. I would say, for now at least, we're still in the clear. As humans, we can easily interpret shapes and distinguish between finer details. It probably won't take AI that long to reach this level, but for now, <laughs> let's enjoy our small wins. There's no denying that AI algorithms for creating 3D models have made significant progress. 
To be honest, I don't mind uh, having an AI that can produce 3D models quickly. Modeling is a tedious process. So if there's a faster way to get the job done, I'm all for it. I don't expect AI to produce production ready assets anytime soon, but it doesn't have to. If it can get us halfway there, that's good enough. Even the furniture models I showed you in this video are already a nice little shortcut. They offer a solid reference for building our own final high quality assets. But I also want to try this in a regular project to see if that can work at all. But I have a feeling it'll be a helpful time saver. I'll update you once I have a final asset ready. But what do you think? Do you see this as a useful tool or just another way for computers to take over? Let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.